For those of you who follow me, you'll know that I'm a retired U.S. Army colonel, served 36 and a half years in the U.S. Army on multiple continents with tours of duty across Africa in Tunisia, Liberia, Botswana, Malawi, Niger, Mauritania, Uganda, and Ethiopia, and have been to oh, nigh on 40 African countries working with militaries and governments across the continent in peacekeeping, in uh, respect for civil authority, and a host of other issues. So a lot of topics I talk about in Africa, I get nonsensical, idiotic things like, well, who are you to talk about Africa, white man? Well, <laughs> who are you to be a racist? <laughs> Raise such a stupid question. Uh, who are you? Worry about your own country. Well, I do. And I report on my own country and its shortcomings with a plum and with transparency and honesty, the shortcomings of my government and its political parties on a daily basis. That doesn't mean that I do not have the prerogative to report on issues in Africa. Now, I will freely admit that what I'm about to say comes from my own worldview and my own moral basis and my own experience in uniform. But I submit to you that um, you don't have to listen to my view. You don't have to accept it. But people should consider it and think about the impact of this, particularly in countries where people are suffering, like South Africa, from an energy crisis precipitated by the racketeering organization known as the African National Congress, which purports to rule South Africa when actually it's running the country into the ground. What a tragic, tragic situation is. But this is an abuse of authority. And let me talk about this specifically. And a lot of people in Africa think it's perfectly fine because they're accustomed to the concept of the chief and the chief gets what the chief wants. But there is news reporting coming out of News 24 in South Africa. The South African National Defense Force is currently investigating a case where army support bases were allegedly each asked, say arm twisted, to contribute 25,000 Rand towards a 900,000 Rand birthday gift for the unit's commanding officer. Yeah, that's right. A birthday gift. Major General Mzia Kaisi Joseph Talilisi apparently received 900,000 Rand caravan. That's $53,000 for his birthday. Now, here's the problem. I've been across Africa. I've seen retiring officers receive gifts, very expensive and lashes, lavish gifts from the military and from their soldiers, which I always found highly appropriate. You serve your nation, not for privileges and perks and retirement gifts. Uh, gifts should be limited to a reasonable nominal amount that doesn't come out of the pockets of your soldiers. Now, details of the investigation were revealed in a parliamentary reply from Defense Minister Tandi Modisi. She was responding to a written parliamentary question from Democratic Alliance Member of Parliament, Cobus Murray, who wanted details on the investigation, went into that matter. He's curious about it, and with good reason. This is my own bias. This is my own worldview, my own experience. But I will tell you that it is highly inappropriate, in my view, that general officers be receiving birthday gifts from their soldiers. The purpose of the military is not to make someone privileged, rich, and elite. It's to lead a nation and protect it from national security, national security concerns. It's as simple as that. And this is this is not acceptable. So for all the people that want to put nasty little comments and who are you to comment on this? You're not South African. No, I'm not. But I'm a moral, upright, honest person. And I can see when things are inappropriate. And if you can't see that, that's your shortcoming, not mine. More light should be shown on this. Officers should not be getting perks like this. It's ludicrous. Thanks a lot, folks. If you're not a follower, please become one here and elsewhere. Appreciate your support. Cheers.